Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and after a, another busy, busy week of racing here at GPVWC, we end here on this wonderful Thursday evening with some wonderful, wonderful racing in our World GT Series. We've had two beautiful rounds at Fuji and Interlagos, which is unfortunately not broadcasted for many a reason. But one thing is becoming very clear, this championship seems to like one person dominating it was dave car smith in 2012 it was alex cooper in 2013 and here in 2015 luis felipe capa Majan, a new name to these parts of the sim racing world he's taken two pole positions in a row and he's taken two wins in a row can he be stopped my name is james kirk with you as always and unfortunately mr ben horrell has a few internet and uh, well not just internet but whole computer issues so we wish him well. We hope to have him back sooner rather than later. But filling into the void admirably and doing cameras with us as well today. So, um, Mr. Comraman Extraordinaire, I think he called himself, is Mr. Mike Phyllis. Now, Mike, you don't have any idea about what's going on in the series, what happens, any of the teams. But I'm sure that, like everyone else at home, you'll be hoping for some good racing on this Istanbul circuit. Uh, we saw some great racing in the career ladder, of course, in the World Sports Series earlier in the year. Yeah, that's when I come into the series blind. Uh, as blind as blind can be, but uh, yeah, I, I understand there's been some good races, uh, so on. It's like you say, it's, a, it's an hour's racing. Uh, short endurance, but still, uh, a lot can happen within that time. Anything goes, I suppose, and uh, let's just see what happens. With qualifying, you know, about to get underway, I'm sure we'll see some good times. We're looking for 153s, 152s for pole position and the man who is up the top of the time sheets after free practice once again was Luis Felipe Cafamajan. You can't put a good man down when he is in form. We've got 15 minutes to set the fastest lap possible here in qualifying before we head into a, in a race of one hour in length. We had a bit of bl uh, blushes going on in the first round when to be honest, we didn't really know when it had finished. I've got a trusty timer with me this time around, so hopefully we shouldn't have the uh, same problems. But while we're waiting for everyone to get round their uh, outlaps and onto their first flying laps, perhaps we can give you a small summary of what happened last time out. As I say, it wasn't broadcast, unfortunately. But we headed to Interlagos, and what an event it was. Luis Felipe Capa Majan, he took his second pole position of the year. But we had the most extraordinary events happening in terms of the podium. Luis himself spun mid-race. Almost lost the lead to Marius Nicolay, who was having a very strong race for walk racing in second. He was able to save it, though. Unfortunately for Nicolay and the other man on the uh, podium at the time, who was... Uh, it was Nico Barclay, uh, Kappa Majan's teammate. Both of them had disconnects. Now, it didn't mean that both of them retired from the race, necessarily. I remind you, in our factor 2 here, you can rejoin during a session, which is great. It means you can get back in the race, but both of them, unfortunately, went from sitting on the podium to not scoring any points at all. That promoted Matthew Chergrin up to second uh, and Lewis McGlade up to third. So, for those guys, it was jubilation, and for Kappa Majan, it was relief. Uh, I'm sure he's wants to uh, take another race win, his third consecutive race win of the season here in World GT, with a, a little less stress on his shoulders than that, I would imagine, Mike. Yeah, <clears throat> well, fingers crossed. So, looking here at Kappa Majan, I think we might as well go to our championship leader. Currently heading round the long turn 11 and up into the last part of turn 12. Uh, we shall probably stick on board with him for uh, another lap to just take you around the Istanbul Park circuit. If you have not seen it before already, as I say, we've had four or five events already this year with Istanbul Park. So uh, I'm sure some people will be sick of the sides of it now, but it's a lovely track to drive, honestly, and we'll see the times come in. It looks like Lewis is actually going to be the first man to set a time as we go on board with him. He sets a 153.4. That's a pretty good time to start off with, but let's see what he does now. Heading down into turn one, a very tight turn one this is as well. And oh, you can listen to the tyre squealing there, sliding through turn one, up into the much more elongated turn two here, and into a very tricky section once again. Uh, sector one dominated by these sections where you really have to slow down a bit more than you hope. Into turn three now, got a clobber the curb in these tin tops, and 
down into turn four again, wanting to brake a little bit harder than you want to. Then into turn five, another braking zone once again. And then you want to gently release the power out, heading through turn six and going over the sector one splits here. As we head up into the much more flowing sector two here, up into turn seven, you can take this a little bit faster uh, than perhaps you might imagine at first. And then into the majestic turn eight, an anti clockwise left hander. Got to be very careful not to uh, open up the throttle a lot as well, otherwise, you're going to be finding yourself going very wide on and onto a very slippery uh, astroturf surface and clay surface we have there on the edge. Now, heading down into another heavy braking zone into turn nine. You want to get a good exit here, pretty crucial. And actually, to be fair, Kappa Majan not taking that very well as we head through turn 10. And then this should be familiar to everyone who was on board with Kappa Majan last lap before heading through turn 11 once again. And uh, probably going off boards here. We'll look at him going into the last section of turns 12, 13 and 14. A, a very Mickey Mouse section is a uh, league uh, management Man of the moment and media mogul uh, Philip Cullen will like to call them. We've got the right hander and Kappa Majan decides to pit. He's still on pole position though with a 153.4. Uh, he's followed by the two downforce cars actually. Thomas Jacob on a 153.5 and Boyd Bryson on a 153.7. Uh, Matthew Chergwin then is another two tenths behind on a 153.9. Chergwin's been looking very good in free practice uh, as has Nico Barclay and uh, new man to the series. Uh, Tero Dahlberg who is driving for Fox Racing. We welcome the Finn over from race department. Has a lot of experience in these cars so I've heard and he's certainly got the initial pace to look like it as well. As uh, Kappa Majan goes out on another lap. So, so far, pretty much status quo as imagined, but perhaps the gap not as big as we were initially expecting, Mike. So not a huge gap, considering, you know, we're looking at one tenth. You know, it's, it's pretty small between the first two, um, and they're all within a second, within the top seven, like, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, Lewis is the one who, who's just outside, uh, heading up, up to the top ten then, 1.5. It's not a massive a gap, you know, with these cars, considering. I think uh, Lewis had a bit of a spin not long ago, uh, or one of the Aurora cars did. I've seen that as I was uh, flicking through the cars. But I don't know whether cold tyres, uh, under pressure, what, you know, anything can happen in qualifying. If people want the best lap, they're not going to get it all the time, but there we go. Very, very true. Very true. As for our attendance, we had a bit of an attendance crisis, if you want to call it that, last uh, last night, in fact, in the World Sports Series. Only 24 people turned up out of a potential 36. So 12 people missing, not you know, it's pretty disappointing. A bit of a better turnout in regards to numbers here now as to the total grid. 26 out of 30 potential drivers. We might get a couple through uh, into maybe the race we hope maybe later in qualifying as well as i see uh oh who's that spinning out of control not too sure but i do see that uh kappa majan is going to be winding up for another lap soon a second hot lap everyone just trying to find some rhythm on track to be honest and oh my goodness me there is lots of people missing parts i see pedro gomez missing his front bumper and there was a simtech i believe who is missing almost all the parts uh let's have a look here Sherwin van der Sloot, uh, unfortunately there in grief. And it must be said, actually, we do have one person with a grid penalty for today's Alexander van der Wilder driving for Smile Power Racing in the uh, Porsche 911 there. But one thing which I'd like to highlight with the series is just how little penalties there have been. And so good have been the standards so far, or little, how little major conflicts there have been within the series that we had no penalties from last time out in Interlagos. So a real good thing to see at least that standards are of a good uh, degree in World GT, which especially considering that this is an endurance race and people are going to want to fight for every bit of track so they get advantage through pitch strategies and everything. You know, it's nice to see people being sensible at least. Yeah, nice clean driving throughout the whole series, you know, like you say, hardly any penalties. Uh, I, I'm just going on what you have to say, and I trust yeah, what yeah. you say. Um, but considering to what other series that we run, for there to be so little penalties, and yeah, to, to be driving for such a long time as well, 
over mm. and over again, you know. Uh, and like you say, it technically is an endurance series with no driver swaps. So, um, yeah, you know, some people might get the hump and want to force their way past, but that just doesn't seem to be the case. Getting the hump is, um, yeah, it does happen, unfortunately. We have a new pole sitter, Nico Barkley, there, is just opposed his teammate, Kappa Majan. A 153.0, but here comes Kappa as he uh, likes to be known in short for his second lap. And he has not retaken pole position there. 153.1 from Barclay's Peruvian compatriot and indeed his teammate. That is going to be a big upwards uh, or a big spiral upwards of confidence of Barclay, who's been very much in the shadow of his teammates so far, as I say, Kappa Majan with both wins this year already, and both pole positions as well. It'd be nice to see a different name on the top of the timesheet, we're hoping. Uh, Chergwin there in third now with a 153.4. The opposing Thomas Jacobs to P4 now. Oh, sorry, so Chergwin P3, Jacobs P4. Bryson remains in P5. Jordan Weeks, we welcome Weeks in the Toro Motorsports car. He's up into P6. But Morby with a very impressive effort there in P7 for TSA Racing. Um, and Marius Nicolay there has just gone into um, P7, deposing Morby down to 8th. So Marius up there in P7, but not really near the heights of the podium, which he was in Interlagos. Terro Dahlberg, I think, might have had an issue out on track because he is pitted and not come out again. So I do wonder whether he ran out of fuel on track or something or had a massive crash. Either way, he's there in P9. And Lewis McGlade currently rounds out our top 10 for Aurora Motorsports. Four minutes to go. Can Kappa Majan be stopped for the first time this year? Well, until last night in WSS, we had a, a different pulse at different race one. So maybe so. It's going to be the opposite here. We're going to be stopping a streak of a different kind. I'm just watching Barclay. And Barclay pits again. I wonder... Of course, this damn ball is a very difficult circuit to nail. Uh, and it takes a lot out of the tyres. And in comes Kappa Majan as well. I know. So I wonder whether people are going for Super Pole laps almost. Yeah, splash and dash, I reckon. Mm. I do notice that Jordan Weeks has actually deposed Boyd Bryson there into p5 and jordan weeks is actually going around for a second hot lap on this run so the englishman looking to do well in the absence of cameron bruce who's looked reasonably strong for the past two rounds but has failed to capitalize on uh, good starting positions in one way or another of course uh, the main thing that comes to mind was uh, fuji where he had that contact with kappa majan on the first lap went down from p2 and was uh, lucky to score points to be honest it was a very intriguing first round uh, of course everybody in a new environment uh, some people brand new to our factor two uh, some people of course had the experience in the masters in 2013 uh, but our factor two has changed a lot since then as well of course so it was a new environment people have to take a bit of time to get used to it of course but it's nice to see weeks up there actually in p5 seemingly taking to it like a duck upon water yeah, like you say, last time out, uh, many different drivers can have the ability to drive many different series. Uh, and it seems like he has the ability to drive. May not be all the best of his ability, but he, he jumps in a car and he'll drive it. Whether it has any um, representation to the Porsches or anything like that, then it will be good for him. And there's a possibility he could show something. Hey, something there is uh, also a very good confidence boost. Here comes... Uh... Well, so he comes here has come Burak Soilu. Now, the second walk racing driver has been a big disappointment considering the standards that walk usually set themselves. He's up into P8. He did, qual he did go into P7, but he's just been deposed by Pedro Gomez, who missed out into Lagos. Had a very impressive debut here last or uh, here back at Fuji, taking a P6, and has looked very good on R Factor 2 actually in comparison to. Our facts are one. A couple of those people, like uh, Showin van der Soep, for example, Luke Walsh as well, the two Simtech guys uh, across the Atlantic Series and World GT, they have looked a lot more competitive than in our factor one. So, new times call for new drivers to take to the front, but that means that Nicolay, Soilu's teammate, is now down in P9. So, that'd be the first time that Soilu would have qualify uh, Nicolay this year. And uh, Philip Morby now into P10, pushing uh, Dahlberg out as we in comes Augustin Canapino who was looking for a drive. He is going to be joined for a Donus Engineering, it looks like, today. But he will not get a qualifying lap. And I'll tell you what, Augustine's been looking quick as well. But we should not be worrying about him just yet. We want to worry about who's going to take pole position here. And it looks to me like 
everyone's on their final lap pretty much. I see uh, Kappa Majan is going round again. And um, Barclay. Oh, I thought he'd gone in then. He's slowing up. Ah, oh, space. He's getting, he's trying to find space, isn't he? Oh, Whoa, he's, he's got to be careful though. He's at the extreme, that is. And with 35 seconds to go. He'll have better track conditions though, arguably. He's got to hope that Van der Wilder up ahead though doesn't hold him up too much. Perhaps let's go on board here with Luis Felipe Capamajan currently going through turn eight at the moment. He's got to find one tenth and six hundredths to be able to match Barclay. Just one thousandth more and he'll put himself on provisional pole position. Uh, I'm trying to think back. I do wonder whether Alex Cooper... I do wonder what the record is for consecutive pole positions is in World GT. I will go and have a look during warm-up. It'll be a good uh, opportunity to, of course. As the flag shows zero and that Luke Walsh, I was telling you, wasn't he? He's up into P8 there for Simtech Joe to Sport. Uh, in a very good last effort there. So that's his qualifying over. Let's look to Kafa Majan here, heading into turn 12 now. He doesn't trouble the apex too much into turn 13. Clipping it a bit more there and into the final turn, turn 14. Clipping it a bit more. The Peruvian, who's dominated Scuderia Basilius Charge so far, does not take pole position for the third time in a row. He does improve, but not by enough. How intriguing is this? I'm just having a look at who else is coming around. Matthew Chergwin here, P3. What can a TSA driver do? He'll have to find four tenths to improve his position. He comes across the line. And he does improve by 10th. It is not by enough, though. I don't think Jacob's improved either. So, Nico Barclay. I'm just having a look. I'm just having a look where everyone else is. I'm thinking Weeks might... No, I think it's pretty much Barclays. We'll see whether he has a massive lockup into turn 12 as well. I think he might just have it, though. Boyd Bryson heads up into P5 there ahead of Jordan Weeks once again. And Barclay is going to finish his lap. I'm not sure with that lockup that it's going to be an improvement. But he flashes his light. Oh, it is an improvement. A 152.8. And so by two tenths. And for the first time this year, Nico Barclay takes pole position. It is here at Istanbul Park. And he is surely wanting to prove in the race that it's uh, not just his teammate who can take the wins at Scuderia Vasilia this year. Mind you, though. What a great day it is for the team once again. Yet another one-two to celebrate. Yeah, another uh, pole position lockout. Uh, I think... Uh, is Jacob still on a hot lap by the looks of it? It looks like he's pushing. Not quite an in-lap. Um, but still, he needs to find six tenths if he's going to do anything. Or four tenths if he's going to split them. I do, yeah. Uh, to be fair, Jacobs did have an outlap there. So technically, he should be on a fast lap. We'll see whether he improves because the uh, race director is given the go-ahead to congratulate everyone. No, no there we go. He pits. So, very interesting qualifying and therefore race ahead. Barclay from Kapamajan, Chergwin in third. Can he take two posi uh, podium positions in a row? Good qualifying for downforce, looking strong in the championship. Fourth for Jacobs, fifth for Bryson, sixth for Gomez. Another good uh, session for ST there. Walsh with his best qualifying of the year, seventh. Burak Soilu out qualifying his teammate and indeed at his home track for Burak, uh, eighth for him. And it's a walk racing eight, nine with Marius Nicolet behind him in ninth. And Philip Morby with an excellent effort as well, rounding out the top 10 for TSA. So perhaps a disappointment for Dahlberg. Not really doing as well as we were hoping for on his debut. Canapino didn't even get to set a lap. McGlade, a podium sitter last time out, only qualifying P13 ahead of his teammate Reese Gardner. Uh, and David Junt, who scored some good points last time out uh, for Racing Aces PB as well, only P22. Um, Alexander van der Wilder, by the way, the only man with a grid penalty to serve this race. He qualifies P18, so therefore he shall finish... Oh, he will start the race in P23. But yeah, that will be a huge confidence boost to uh, Nico Barclay, who, as I say, has been very much in the shadow of Kappa Majan this year. Yeah, it just goes to show that anything can happen in a qualifying situation. Um, but yeah, te teammates are always the battle that you're looking for. And I say that to all my guys. So, you know, if you can beat your teammate, you're half the step to beating everyone else. 
Right then, so while we're in this warm-up session, let's take you guys at home down the top 10 drivers and the top 5 in the team's standings. It is round 3 of 7 here, so we are almost at the half... Well, halfway through this race, we will be halfway through the series already, I guess? No, that's wrong, surely. Portugal's the halfway point, literally, because it's round 4 or 7. Let's just go through the standings, shall we? Luis Felipe, Kappa Majan... Full points return so far with 50 on the board. He is 20 points ahead of Matt Richards, who is out again with injury today. Uh, so he will not be able to improve on his position, Matt. Then we have Matthew Chergwin. Took a second last time out in Interlagos. He's starting in a podium position again for the race here today. He's one point behind Richards on thir uh, 29. Then Lewis McGlade is fourth on 27. Thomas Jacobs is fifth with two fourth place finishes so far. 26 points for him. Cameron Brewster, also not here today, is then six on 19. Nico Barclay got a good chance to improve his position here. P7 for the Peruvian on 16 points. Then it's Boyd Bryson on 13. Pedro Gomez, who's only raced in one round of the season so far on 10 points and david junt rounds out the top 10 on nine points and in terms of the team standings scuderia basilia dominating proceedings so far 66 points for them with downforce as i say they've been having a very good season so far 39 points in second aurora motorsports third on 34 tsa racing fourth on 33 points and smile power fifth on 30 points but i believe once again they only have one driver here tonight uh so could be damaged, unfortunately, in their charge. But actually, very close, to be honest. Not only behind the leader in terms of the drivers, but behind the leader in terms of the teams as well, of course. Any problems for the front two of Barclay and Kappa Michan, and that could very easily let the other guys in. And points come at a premium, of course, with only seven rounds and one race at each meeting. It's, uh, there's not many opportunities to catch up and overtake people in the standings. No, not with a, uh, a short series like this, um, but points, like you say, points are, like, I would say, like, rocking horse, but, nah, I wouldn't say that. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, the points available, anything can happen with the front two, you know, turn one is always, always a situation, I don't know what it's like on, on this series, but tyres with our factor two you know you got the tire wear you, you know you got flat spotting you know you can, you've got the lot so it's, it all plays into the hands of the opposition if you make a mistake yeah absolutely i would agree so canopino has unfortunately left us for the moment hopefully he'll be coming back sooner rather than later just to remind to everyone that we have a standing start here in world gt and once that green light comes on, then we have a good one hour's worth of racing. Should be some exciting entertainment from start to finish. We uh, hear that we should be expecting around 32 laps today. And um, we're also expecting a big mix of strategies. Some people are going to try the no stop once again. Rumour is that the one stop is actually going to be the faster one. Of course, people want to try different fuel amounts. Some people might want to go to the end on fuel. Apparently, if you fuel save, you can use up an entire tank and go to the end of the race, maybe people will have tyre issues, maybe people will two-stop. There is genuinely going to be a massive amount of uh, variation, I imagine, from today. As we've just had news through from our race director, Chris Williamson, that Davijan is actually going to be starting from the pit lane for a Park Ferme reset. So, another an interesting strategy already playing out there in the pits. Yes, yeah, so uh, something's been changed. Um, well, like you say, it's a reset. But that plays, you know, it could be he could fuel save. He could go a non stopper, you know. He, Keep out he trouble at the start. start. Yeah, he could have trouble at the start. You know, it's ed anything is a possibility. You know, I've got here, like I say, unknown. I, I don't know what the drivers are like. I, You know, I, I've, I've not seen it. But. Okay, what I see so far is is the availability for points and availability for anyone to get points, which is good with the racing that we see, I suppose. I would agree. I mean, I know for sure that Turkey's turn one and turn two can cause issues. I came into grief in race two of the Formula Challenge this year and found myself hurtling into a car side on. That was good fun. Uh, we don't have as many cars here in World GT as we do in Formula Challenge, but 
in tin tops, uh, people sometimes feel the need to get a little bit more rugged. And though we haven't had many penalties, it doesn't mean that the racing hasn't been without its contact, of course. Um, since we've got another four minutes or so to go, firstly, I shall remind all of you uh, watching from wherever you are, that if you want to get involved with tonight's proceedings, either by sending in your thoughts about the race, uh, sending us uh, thoughts about qualifying, asking me or Mike any questions, uh, wanting some questions to be asked to the drivers after the race for podium interviews, then feel free to hop onto Twitter and hashtag GPVWC Live. That's GPVWC Live. Uh, or indeed mention me and my Twitter handle of at Kirky Life. That's K-I-R-K-Y-L-I-F-E at Kirky Life. And uh, we're going to have a little welcome to our new people in the field. Of course, we've already welcomed Tero Dahlberg over from Race Department. We hope he settles in to uh, the world gt scene here at gpv wc we would also like to welcome uh diego no not diego cranthor he's already been here before we'd like to welcome back rick scott who yeah, I, I, yeah, I i can't yeah, remember yeah. the last time that rick scott even drove but he's driving for his own team of hawkeye who finally brought along a livery and i think it looks a stunner as well of course augustine canapino new to this uh, series uh for this year as well as is jordan weeks of course I'm just going to have a little look to see whether Roy has been here before. This year, that is, because I can't remember Roy taking part. No, Roy Schroten as well is uh, new for this year, driving for Fox Racing. That's actually quite a nice new lineup that Fox Racing are fielding there with, uh, with Roy Schroten and Tero. Seem like quite a nice, capable couple. Yeah, Roy's a good driver in any series. Um, we've, we've got him for the Atlantic series. He, he had a bit of a, a mare last time out in Indy. But uh, consistently, he'll drive, and uh, he drives to the limit. So, you know, Fox Racing, by the sounds of it, I've got a, a good, steady lineup. I'm, I'm not going to say fastest, but it's a steady one. One that can score points, for sure. Yeah, yeah. With you know, one that would take advantage of anything that happens. Like, I would also like um, to, on the subject of tweeting us uh, at or at the hashtag GPVWC Live, you'll notice around our screen that we have overlays. Uh, if you tuned into the Atlantic series as well on Tuesday, you'll notice that we had overlays as well. But we're we're trying to tune it. We're trying to find the right balance of what to have. You'll notice that up the top of uh, your screen, you'll notice there is no rolling ticker anymore. It's just a little experiment, I thought, personally. It cluttered up the screen, perhaps, on Atlantic series. So do give us your thoughts on how you would like the layout to be if you do like the ticker up there in comparison to the atlantic series uh broadcast which you can find on the uh gpvwc youtube channel uh, then please do say so we can bring it back for other rounds if you prefer the non-ticketless ticker up there i don't know what i was going on about there <laughs> but if, if, if you like what you're seeing now then say it as well, and we can bring that onto the atlantic series broadcast as well unfortunately it's not the most user-friendly of overlays uh we have to find it's you know very awkward to change and stuff so i know we might want to make some things smaller or make some things bigger or remove things like the ticker up top or try and add things in but it's very difficult so do let us know what you like about the overlays perhaps what you don't like about the overlays what should change what shouldn't change and uh hopefully throughout this year we shall uh, fine tune it so that when it comes to next year when uh, hopefully the majority of series will be moving on to our factor two we shall have the perfect setup for what should hopefully be a perfect year so a few seconds to go before we head into the race mike you know nothing about the series who's going to win everyone's a winner everyone's a winner <laughs> everyone's a winner very diplomatic there um no, if, if what you're saying, like you say, is led to believe, then you've got the top two who qualified um, with the possible. Uh, I've just been looking through um, the series standings or whatever. So, so yeah, uh, sorry, uh, Louis Philippe Capamajan, um, he's in second. Whether, I don't know what their starts are like. So, Nico Barkley, mm, he, he's pushed this one, put it that way. So, if the possibility of he's going to push the whole race, then it's going to be his. Yeah, I'm going to say him, because it's his first poll today. In, 
thing I'm going to take upon Tom Barclay as well. There we go. I think, I think the cycle must be broken sooner or later. Um, yeah, I'm sure that Barclay will try his best. Of course, you never know with strategy. People could come out from nowhere. It's, it's the beauty of World GT. And I'm sure that for Nico Barclay, it will be a beautiful sight not to see anybody ahead of him on the road as he heads us off from pole position on this formation lap. He's followed by his teammate, Luis Felipe Capamajan. If they are able to convert uh, these positions into another result like they've been doing for the two rounds prior, then Basilio will be looking more and more strong in their team's championship charge. Matty Chergrim completes the initial podium slots here. P3 for TSA. And then you've got the two downforce cars. Thomas Jacobs, P4. He's finished P4 both times this year already. If he uh, takes another one, I think he might be starting to think that there is a trend to be set this year. All uh, in fours. All in fours, yeah. Bob Bryson uh, is P5 and Jordan Gomez is uh, P6. I see a number of people going wide, actually, at turn four there. It's a bit bizarre, especially on the information app. But yeah, Jordan Weeks. Oh, sorry? Did you just say Jordan Gomez? <laughs> The two of them went off track at the same time, just mushed the two together. Jordan yeah, Weeks is uh, yeah. P6 with Pedro Gomez, P7 for ST. Luke Walsh with the best qualifying of the year, P8 for Simtek, Jota Sport. And then we've got the two walk racings of Burak Soyalu for the first time out qualifying his teammate. And here at his home track as well, Marius Nicolay, who unfortunately disconnected off the podium last time out at Interlagos, rounding out the top 10. We then have Philip Morby starting P11 for TSA with Terry Dahlberg on his debut starting P12 for Fox Racing. We're showing his teammate behind him, P13, making his debut also for Fox Racing. And then we have the two Auroras. It's starting to become a bit Noah's Ark, isn't it? Lewis McGlade, P14, and Reese Gardner, P15. Paul Watkins starts P16 for the Mighty Fourth with Mark Fuller, P17 for ST. Theo van den Brink starts P18 for Adonis Engineering with Paul Joseph, P19 for the Mighty Fourth. And rounding out the top 20 is Brett Metcalf for Amaroli Racing Team. Diego Carantha starts P21 for Hawkeye in their brand new livery with David, uh, with, sorry, Rick Scott behind in P22. Welcome back, Rick, to racing. Uh, so the two Hawkeyes again side by side. Alexander van der Wilder, after a five place grid penalty, starts P23 for Smart Power Racing. Behind him, Ken Hunter starts P24 for Amarelli Racing Team. We then have Sherman van der Soot, P26 for uh, Simtech Jota Sport. And Augustin Canapino will round out the guys on the grid in P26 after not qualifying. David Junt starts from the pit lane after a Park Ferme reset. So the guys come up to the start finish line once again. Uh, our race director kindly asking everyone to close the gaps, please. It is a uh, massive the tube. gap, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, on there for a while. it's London tube conditions that we're trying to replicate here, and not the gaps between uh, some models' teeth. Teeth? What am I? I haven't put mine in, to be honest. No, it sounds like it. <laughs> yeah, a yeah, long not. time for the uh, front two on the grid. Might actually help them with the hot track conditions, to be honest. Actually, I say hot, it's only 18 degrees on track, which is uh, quite low, actually, for but uh, for Turkey. But there we are. Everyone has slotted into place now. And we look to the lights ahead. We've got one, two, three, four, five lights. And here at Istanbul Park. We are go, go, go. And it is a decent start from Barclay. He has gotten away well. And into turn one we go. Hopefully we won't have too many crashes. Oh, contact in the midfield. Oh, that is massive. Five cars involved there. Both walks as well. And I can't believe that people have already crashed on the straight, let alone the first turn. But Nico Barclay with a good getaway. Kapamajan and Chogan away as well. Jacob's fourth. Weeks has had a good start, mind you. I'm yeah, to be by the head of Bryson. Tal Dahlberg already up into 7th, Watkins up into 8th, Gardner into 9th, Van den Brink into 10th with Metcalf 11th, I have no idea how this is happening, and Augustin Canapino is already changing up a 14th position going into contact with Sherwin van der Sloot, but let's see who's in grief there, um, Gomez out already from a qualifying position of P6, uh, Van der Wilder in issues, Hunter, Soylu, Young from pit lane, P23, Joseph, McGlade, Nicolay and Morby, all going around with uh, problems there. So a real shame to see at the start. But look at this gap. Barclay is extending now. 1.1 seconds as we have uh, heading up to the sector two split. It's going to be after turns nine 
and 10 here. What an incredible start it's been. It's behind. I notice uh, Boyd Bryson having a little look on the inside of Jordan Weeks. He's going to have a little dive into the turn line. No, he isn't. Jordan Weeks holds on just for now as we head on to the second sector split. Here's the white line now. What is the gap? It is 1.5 seconds. Barclay ever improving. Um, Battle for third lighting up now. Chogwin against Jacobs. Jacobs with a very good slipstream. It's Aston Martin versus Aston Martin. Jacobs looks to the outside of turn 12. Chogwin holds the inside line. Jacobs around the outside. This will be an impressive move in a tin top, but Chogwin holds the inside line for turn 13. Uh, but at the end of lap one of a predicted 32, Nico Barclay leads from Kappa Majan. Chogwin. Jacobs, Weeks, Bryson, Dahlberg, Watkins, Gardner, and Vanden Brink. Yeah, I think I might have put a commentator's curse on the first turn accident. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do apologise, guys, for that. Wasn't, wasn't it even first turn? That's true. It's a, the, pit, the pit straight. But that's that's something to be proud of, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I know. Dearie, dearie, me. Roy Shoten was uh, caught up in that as well. I watched him go all the way around with uh, no front splitter no front bumper um but massive massive attraction um obviously gomez has gone out he, you know he was looking good uh morby's in the pits um remember glades dropped down everyone um we are 1.4 now for uh, the gap between nico and lewis now so it's it's there and thereabouts uh, 1.6. So oh, there's there's Jacobs, Jacobs around the outside of Chogrin. Jacobs has got him from between turn 7 and turn 8. Jacobs now up onto the podium. Chogrin starting to fall back a little in close pursuit. Our Weeks and Bryson there in P5 and P6. So a nice move from Chogrin up into the podium position. Remember, there is a long way to go. 56 minutes, 56 and uh, 48 seconds at our time. Counting the timer on my phone started successfully, which is another good thing. Is there's Tero Dahlberg as well up there in P7 onto the back of this battle for what will soon become P4. I notice Watkins as well um, having a little battle of his own back there in P8. He's got uh, Gardner, Vandenbrink, and Schroten. So I think it wasn't Schroten. Oh no, so Schroten. Schroten doesn't have a front bumper, but he is still going. The understeer in that car must be chronic. But here goes um, Gardner on the inside of Watkins into turn 12. Uh, the Australian tries it but can't do anything as we've had our second retirement of the day in the form of Alexander van der Wilder. Watkins holding on for dear life. Gardner up the inside though into turn 14. He should have it all. Oh, Watkins Ooh, was close. trying to keep a hold on it. And he does just for now, but uh, of course, Van der Brink and Schroeten are very close behind as well. The gap now extended to two seconds between Barclay and Kapamajan. Chogren trying to hold on to the back of Jacobs. Weeks, Bryson in close pursuit. Dahlberg oh, falling away a bit. Oh, so, yes. all Gardner. Down. Gardner goes on. And so, I think that was just the missed breaking zone. Be careful as he comes back. Yeah, yeah so, so it was just the missed breaking zone for Gardner. And all oh, behind, that's Diego Carantha flashing his lights, or is it? Nicholas Marius Nicolay, I'm really not too sure. It is uh, Nicolay flashing his lights wildly. I do not know why. Maybe he thinks that he should let him through. I'm really not sure. Well, he didn't take the position from him. He, no. He went off fighting for position, so. And it wasn't a safe. It, yeah, it was safe when he came back on because he was, he was in front of uh, the whole guy. So for him to be flashing his lights is whether he thinks he's a faster car. Maybe, maybe not. I do wonder whether he's got a light problem, maybe, because it seems like he's trying to turn it off and he can't. As, oh, there's more contact behind. But uh, who is the main benefactor of that? So, Be Vanden Brink up into ninth, Stroten 10th, Canapino from the back of the grid up into P11, Metcalf into 12th, Nicolay, of course, up into uh, 12th, and Reese now looking really under a lot of pressure heading down into turn nine diego carantha very close behind as well in hawkeye hawkeye yet to score any points of course uh, but uh and we still got morby in the well, morby's just come out the pit sorry so and uh, pedro gomez has actually rejoined the races burak soilu is out now as well so three retirements already in the space of six minutes uh, I think I've jinxed everyone on this one <laughs> saying, that, saying there was some good clean racing and they're just proving me wrong aren't they it's a shame it's a shame as the gap between Barclay and Kapamajan is held at 1.8 seconds. seconds. Yeah. Jacobs looks to be catching on to the back of Kapamajan though, though. He's lost Churgwin a bit. So maybe... Uh, yeah, the yeah Churgwin, can... Churgwin's in a battle with uh, Weeks at the moment. Mm -hmm. And Weeks doing very well here on his debut as well. 
We'll have a look now. It says um, battling between uh, Vandenbrink and Schroten. And Vandem and Schroten, sorry, is through with no front bumper still. And oh, now Canapino's on the back of his teammate. How he's driving with no front splitter or bumper, he must, his tyres must be screaming. I don't know quite how he's doing it, but there we are. And this is really providing a bottle cork effect, Vandenbrink, as well. Because, of course, Gardner is still there. Metcalf must have had a spin or something, actually, because he's now down to P14. But yeah, very interesting scenes all around as I do see Weeks on the back of Chogan trying to go around the outside of turn 8. He's going to try and hold it. This is going to be an impressive move if he can pull it off. Really needed a bit more purchase around the outside there, I think, though. But Chogwin, nevertheless, under a lot of pressure as Weeks goes wide. And that can allow Bryson back through. He had a little look on lap one to try and get past the Englishman. And Bryson does die for it. And that is a nice clean move from Bryson. And if anything, it looks like Weeks went slightly wide. And now Dahlberg's going to look to try and punish the Englishman. Yeah, I don't know. That was a mislead. A missed breaking point, I think, again. Uh, under pressure, maybe. Um Boyd behind him, but he's under even more pressure now. Um, with Dalberg, he's gonna slip up the inside now. Ooh, Jordan oh, turns him a bit oh, too much. Oh, bit of a contact. And, oh, a bit further contact, and I think yeah, Dalberg's a little bit in the right there to you know say you know yeah, watch out, I am there. You know that was a legitimate move. Give me some room, screaming for it. Yeah, but either way, neither driver comes out with too much. Uh, damage, damage hopefully, hopefully. They can, yeah, yeah continue on in p6 and p7 as Barclay extends the gap up front to 2.1 seconds behind oh, look at this in p9 once again Schroeder in ninth here comes Marius Nicolay though with the light glitch it must be because he's continually trying to turn them off nice solid move from Nicolay though into turn one he is up into p9 now ahead of Schroeder and Vandenbrink 11th Gardner 12th and Canapino has had a bit of a mare on that lap that down to p13 and look at this foul by over P14. You've got Metcalf, Yunt from a pit lane start. David Yunt in the points. Carantha 16th. Schoen van der Sloot 17th. Walsh in there 18th. And Lewis McGlade looking to recover from his first incident as well. David Yunt threw on Brett Metcalf up into P14. Here goes Diego Carantha around the outside of the South African. Can't do anything just yet. But what a what mighty scrap we have here for the last points. It's a massive gaggle of cars there. Eh? Look at that. Just like possible series from last night great to see oh yes oh the racing the last two days is everywhere it's just battles everywhere again great to see great to see as don't get me wrong here mike i think jacobs is reeling in kappa majan here because it's now seven tenths the gap between the two yeah let's uh let's, let's keep on board with him a second We'll have a look now, see what the gap is when we cross the line, because we know the Barclay's been extending his advantage up front. He's got some good slip behind him. We're just, uh, we Ooh, look running. at the closing speed there from Jacobs on the brakes. He's got a very soft percentage of brake pressure there. He got it soft in time, unfortunately, but yeah, that 7 tenth gap has been gobbled up in one braking zone, heading onto lap 6, a predicted 32. The gap is now 3 tenths between Kapamjan and Jacobs. And I'll tell you now that Jacobs did not actually lose any time to lead a Barclay. He only gained time to Kapamajan, who is now 2.6 behind, uh, 2.6 seconds behind his teammate. Yeah, yeah, this just uh, opens up for Barclay, doesn't it? Really, he's uh, he's pulling away there as uh, Kapamajan is fighting there uh, with with Jacobs. So you know, if you're defending, you're not attacking, which is all playing into the hands of uh, our wanted person. Got a message there, mate. As uh, <laughs> Shush, didn't hear that. <laughs> as uh, Jacobs now right on the back of the Peruvian Championship leader. Of course, a reminder that there is no success ballast here in World GT, so all cars are as equal as they can be. Of course, there are different characteristics to each car. For example, the Aston Martin is good on straight line speed. The uh, Corvette is generally considered the best overall car. But I tell you what that top line speed could be what helps Jacobs out in the long run. But you see here through turn eight, that's where Kapamajan finds his time. I think it's going to take a pretty exceptional lap for Jacobs to be in a decent position to try and overtake into what I presume to be turn 12 hairpin. Yeah, but he's closing down. You know, Kapamajan might have the coordinating speed, but by the end of that straight there, he was right on his gearbox again. So... He's not pulling away as easily as he thought, and he's literally oh, he's in the slip. He's going for the overtake now.
all of the wing oh, on Kappa Mishan's car. And this this is probably going to be one of the easiest overtakes yeah, Jacobs gone. pulls off this series. He is into second. Yeah, it was like um, Matthew Arrington last night with uh, with his really low wings. It was indeed, yeah. But I tell you something which um, is funny. In round one, Kappa Mishan lost the lead of that race. He started on pole position. He lost the lead of that race to Jacobs and Matt Richards in the early stages because he had higher wing but he didn't pit so i do wonder whether kapamajan is playing the long game here in comparison to his rivals around him and in actual fact he's got this all under control yeah it could be it could be just playing the long game you know not not fighting saving the stuff and then come you know 70 percent during the race then decide to turn up the wick you know it might be his ploy. He doesn't doesn't care that people are going to be pulling away because he knows he might have it in the tank plate. He, he's hoping to save a bit in the tank, I imagine, for the end of the race is behind. I noticed Chergwin still there in fourth. He's lost weeks, but that's because Bryson has got past weeks. His third one. Oh, my word! Mark Fuller! If we can get, please, a replay of that. His car... Look, oh, my word! Who did he get collected by? Um, oh my goodness me, it was um, Rick Scott or something flying up in the ca in the air, Mark Fuller. And there was a massive crash. I think there was a can of Pino Nose Vanden Brink involved there. And I think it was Rick Scott as well. But that was a massive crash down at turn one. And poor old Mark Fuller is... Oh, it's not been a good day for ST at all. And I wouldn't be surprised if he retired from that. As oh, I was worried the Capimajan had lagged out there. No, he's still there in third, thankfully. Uh, but that's shaking up the order in the midfield quite a lot. I see we've got a bit of lag, unfortunately. But Chergrin fourth and fifth there. We've got Weeks in the sixth, Dahlberg seventh, Marius Nicolay is now eighth, with Watkins ninth, Stroke and tenth right on the back of him. Am I lagging, mate? No, I got you perfectly clear. I, I just, when I had the replay, I, I did it slow mode because I'm good like that. Oh, no worries. I think it's just a server spike or something. As Mark Fuller has left the race, unfortunately, so that's two STs out in the space of five laps. A real shame for the two of them. Um, and Theo van den Brink out as well. I am not surprised by that at all. Um, as we're now live once again, there we are. Oh, so that's why it's all laggy. It was on a replay because, you know, half factor two. That means Watkins up into ninth. Stroten in tenth and still very close behind with no front bumper, I mind you. Gardner with no rear bumper in eleventh. Yunt up into trots on the pit lane. Canapino thirteenth. McGlade fourteenth. Brett Metcalf now in fifteenth. And with five retirements already, at this rate, we're going to have everyone who finishes will score a point. Seems that way, doesn't it? Uh, I seem to be bringing bad luck today. I don't know what it is. What are you doing? I don't know, what am I doing? Something's not right, is it? You think your Welsh charms would help everyone out? I know, them dumb lucky <laughs> charms. Uh, but I'm very intrigued by this gap now between Jacobs and Kappa Mishan. Look at the gap which has been extended here. 2.2 seconds between the two of them as... Oh, I think there's Roy Schroten is down there in P10. Who is he battling with? Paul Watkins. Yeah, look at this. I think Paul Watkins and Roy Schroeden. Oh, yeah, no. That was, yeah, contact between Schroeden and uh, Watkins. And, yeah, Schroeden was trying to turn in, but Watkins had a load of understeer. The two came into contact, and it's left Watkins well out the points now with a completely damaged car. Schroeden down, down in 10th. The big benefic benefactor out of that, Reese Gardner, up into 9th. Yeah, yeah, and Canapino is up to 12th. Uh, right at the back of Yunt, Yunt, yeah. The guys who started at the back ended up with the, uh, with with the, the best game. Exactly. You know, it's not, it's not always good to say a qualifying lap, is it? Canapino might actually be looking up a move here as well on the inside or outside of Yunt, heading up into the turn 12 hairpin. We've had the most moves down here during the career ladder and World Sports Series. It seems to be the same case here, and Canapino goes to the inside, squiggles, squiggles under the braking. And Yunt gives him plenty of room, perhaps a bit too much room, to be honest, actually. Uh, Canapino through, and uh, he's now got to get past the uh, stricken Schroten as well. It could be a bit difficult, though, especially on the straights. Yeah, he's got, got no downforce, so he, he's got no drag there. So the straights is just going to be opening up. He's got air, as much air as he needs to, to call his engine as well. So uh, I think if he's going to look, he's got to look for the corners. He's just got to get in his draft and get as much as, as close as he can. We've 
past the 15 minute mark, we are a quarter of the way through this race, so my timer so reliably tells me. 43 minutes to go. 40, yeah, the, the better part of 43 minutes to go should be a very exciting remainder of the race. And look at how much Schroten loses there through that tight section of uh, turns four and five. Canapino right on the back now. I can see a move happening in very short time. Oh, yeah, that's going to either come up now, turn seven, or into turn eight. Look, turn seven. Already. Already. And Canapino is into the top ten. Easy as pie. From the back of the grid as well. From the back, from the back, of, the back of the grid. I think more impressive, to be honest, is David Junt here looking up P11 from a pit lane start. I know. But even worse, the back of the grid lane, you know what I mean? Mm. Having to wait for all the cars to go past and then start his race up in the P11. Oh. He did that at WSS last year, didn't he? He did, that was his speciality last year, race twos. So there is no second race here, of course. But I do wonder whether Schroten's going to... Oh, excuse me, a bit of indigestion. I do wonder... Actually, no, Canopy's had a pretty good sector there, so... I don't I think Schroten, think... even with the low downforce, will be able to buy back at this stage. No, I don't think so. As we've had another retirement, Watkins did retire. Also, Diego Carantha for Hawkeye's retired as well. So we are up to seven retirements already, and it is only lap 10. Which is astonishing. This is definitely I'm the most sorry, brutal I'm race. Sorry, guys. <laughs> a lot of people have been complaining about Istanbul Circuit or Istanbul Park or this version of it as well. Had to have a bit of an update. But looking back up to the frontier. I noticed a certain Thomas Jacobs has cut the gap down to Nico Barclay to 1.7 seconds. Let's see what happens. 1.4 seconds. Yeah, Mr. Jacobs is turning up the wick. It's fluctuating between 1.4 and 1.6. So uh, he, he's definitely pulled something out of his bag, hasn't he? Kappa Majan just keeps on falling away. Cherry Wynn's going to be on the back of him soon. He's only two seconds off him. But less than that, 1.4 maybe? And Bryson being dragged with him. Weeks is sort of Weeks is a further five seconds off. He's dragging Talberg oh, along with him in six and seven. Really close, mm. Lots of potential good battles to be had. I'm just going to have a little sneaky look at this sector split between Barclay and Jacobs at sector two. One point three seconds. He's 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 got his hurry on from somewhere. The downforce guys, as I said, have been doing very well so far this year. Second in the team's championship going into Istanbul Park. Their main, well, the rivals ahead of them are Scuderia Basilia. And at the moment, Scuderia Basilia will be still outscoring the two of them. But let's have a look at what happens when we cross the line once again to head onto lap 11 now. Nico Barclay crosses the line now. Jacobs, 1.4. So Barclay pulls out. It seems like it's a similar situation between... Uh, Kapamajan and Jacobs a few laps before. It's pretty clear that Jacobs has gone for a lower downforce setup, which means he's better on the straights, which do dominate a large part of this track, to be fair. But Barclay owns the smaller corners, and, and more particularly the... turn eight as well. Yeah, coming out of uh, the, the end of sector one, where, where we're just on with him now, um, obviously that, you've got the, the end of sector three as well. You know, he, he's pull, pulling a bit out there, but you know, if, if Jacobs can keep with him through them and not lose as much time, I mean, what's it, 1.3 rolling at the yeah. moment, so it's not too bad. He, he is closing the gap, but, um, you know, there's plenty of time for him to, to do more damage, I suppose. It's almost like Paul or Abdul, isn't it? Two steps forward and well, it's two steps back. It's more like one step back in this case, isn't it? Where he, get, he gains one tenth in one sector. He gains another in another sector, and in sector three, it's pulled back a little bit. So, theoretically, Jacob should be able to catch up to Barclay, but whether that is before or after the pit stop phase, if there is to be a pit stop phase for these guys, it is yet to be seen, of course. As I'd like to give you uh, information as well, that David Junt has gotten past Roy Schroten now in the battle for P11 and P12. Still, I think if Roy is able to maintain that P12, that will be a very impressive result for him, as it's now 1.2 the gap between Jacobs and Barclay. So it is very much two tenths gained over the first two sectors, one tenth gained back at Barclay, unless it was a poor third sector from Jacobs on that last lap. Yeah, the roll, rolling the rolling says it's about about a minute. A minute? That's a long gap. It's about a second between them. It's fluctuating now between nine tenths and 1.2. So it's it's with a concertina effect. I think he, he will have him in due course. It's just... Where and when, and where the Barclay will get him. 
one second. Jacobs was a full three tenths better than Barclay on that lap alone. So I do wonder whether Jacobs now nailed you. Know, maybe he's had a look ahead at Barclay and saw how to take the corners a bit better. Yes, it's you can see we're, we're on board with him now. You can see that he has got a, a lot of closing speed. So he's right on his tail now. It's the brakes, isn't it? He's just so much more supreme. And you can definitely see through this sector as well. Jacob's further closing. He hasn't won race in World GT yet, though. And especially for a new team, that's going to be a pretty big, I'm sure. Look, look at that. Six tenths the gap now. Four tenths in sector one alone. What do you think will be going through Jacob's head at this point? Hopefully, not too much excitement because obviously we still got 38 minutes to go. But he's probably thinking, if I can get past that, I've got clean air. He's, he's good on the brakes. As long as he doesn't make any clear mistake, then he should be away. But like we say, you know, with our factor two, we've, we've got the tire wear, you know, slight lock up, anything. It's. It's, he's just going to be thinking, I've just got to bring this car home now. I'm sure the Downforce Radio guys are going to be cheering their boy on from home as it's now five tenths the gap. And this is going to be the area where Jacobs look at Barclay. Barclay already going defensive. He, he knows, knows that this man is coming. And that, yeah, this does genuinely seem like a move for the race lead, um, not, not based, based on, on strategy. strategy. No, no, he is, he is right over him. It's so it's going to be so close. You're probably looking at about three to four tenths difference over the line. Here we go then on to lap 13. Oh, I must admit that Barkley gets better traction out of that final mm. corner. And a tenth regain from Jacobs as well. But it's his first sector, isn't it? This is where the most time has been eaten. Yeah, look at that. Jacob's just, I mean, looking at them going through turn one, Jacob just seemed to have this car nailed. He's not necessarily having the less downforce on his rear holding him back. He's using it to swing into the corners, which around Istanbul, the nature of the track actually suits it a little bit. Yeah, he took a tighter line into turn one as well, to be honest. And look at this. He's right on the back of him now, isn't he? Yeah, all over him. He is going to be smelling his exhaust fumes. Round we go now. Jacob's trying to get a good line, trying to stay out of the dirty air, as you say. It's a dangerous thing. Three tenths the gap. It is uh, game time. This is where Barclay makes his money. It's massive. Three laps. In, in three laps, he's taken over a second out of Barclay. And we're not even halfway through this race. Uh, as we say, Jacob's, he has not. Well, he's won a race here at GPVWC before. He's won a couple of them. He's won in ITC. He's won in... Formula Challenge. He is yet to win in World GT. Had a pretty successful campaign in 2013. And I'm sure that he'll be wanting an even more successful one this time around. He's scored two fourths this year. If he can take his first win of the year, I'm pretty sure he'll be jumping up and joy for that. It will mean the downforce gain a little bit back in the team's championship as well. Surely the move might be done now. Again, Barclay going ultra defensive. Here comes Jacobs now. Slipping Big down into the slipstream, he looks to the inside. He has got it, it looks like he's got that move planted, just Lately. like he did. Later on to the brakes, and yet yeah, Barker gives him the room. Jacobs takes the lead of this race. race. Just like he did Kapamajan, exactly the same. He knows the less wing is helping, but we have yet to see strategy played out, and we are now five minutes to the halfway point of this race. That's when we should be starting to see the first pitters in. We'll, we'll see exactly now what type of car he's got set up now because if he's out of the dirt yeah now if he has got that low wing you will see it play to his advantage as he pulls out a gap i mean he's half a second ahead now already uh looking back to the battle for p6 and p7 jordan week still battling around with a uh, tero dahlberg i think there is a yeah there's a much better scrap going off of p11 though yeah 11 12 and 13 is looking pretty sweet at the moment David Junt has not been able to escape Roy Schroten and battling with Schroten has meant that Lewis McGlade has been able to catch up onto the back of these guys as well. All good points, these five, four and three points respectively. And uh, Lewis McGlade especially will be wanting to recovering from getting involved in that first lap incident. Roy Schroten will want to be, uh, will want to be doing as much damage control as possible. And Lewis dives up the inside of Schroten. And yeah, yeah with we, no front bumper to turn in, that was a pretty easy move for Mr. McLean. Yeah, jump, jump sliding around turn one as well, a little bit of uh, oversteer there, going into there. 
I'd say, well, it's still an impressive job from Young to be honest to avoid. Well, I mean, he didn't have to avoid anything because he started from pit lane to get, but to actually get up into eleventh of all places, yeah, a very yeah, good effort yeah. from the PP driving so, so far. far. McGlade's looking like he's a bit uh, racy today as well. He's he's pushing on, uh, catching the junt. I don't know whether the junt's going to tow him along, um, but apart from that, I don't think there's anything else happening apart from uh, that. It might be six and seven. Yeah, I was, I'm, I'm keeping a BDI on weeks, to be honest. But it seems that Tero is quite content just to sit with him for the moment, rather than you know try and make any gains on him. Yeah, well, you look now, Thomas Jacobs, second already ahead. And he's and in! He... Jacobs pits! Oh, oh. So, oh, there we are. The goes on. As does Kappa Majan, as does Chergrin, as does Bryson, as does Weeks, as does Dahlberg. Nicolay as well, and I'm pretty sure that Jacobs was the first to pit in Fuji as well. They all down to top five. Maybe pre, pre like preempting the undercut, perhaps. Massive undercut because everyone, everyone has gone past. Oh, oh. and McGlade is past Yunt, and it goes shrouding down the inside of Yunt as well. Contact into turn twelve. Lewis McGlade clearly up into eleventh, and Yunt has lost position to both him. And um, Schroeder oh, is in. Yunt is in. So that says uh, that much. Um, Thomas Jacobs, by the way, out into eighth position. So a pretty nice bit of clean air for the Englishman to come into. But now we watch the leaders to see whether they respond or whether they stick. Yeah, it's going to be interesting whether they're going to, uh, to think that they're going to get the undercut. You could do. Like you say, it was first in, in one of the other races. Maybe Fuji, he, yeah. Maybe he knows something we don't. I'm not sure how early he was in for uh, Interlagos. I have a feeling he was on the first as well, though. But as I say, this was what, what happened in Fuji was Jacobs pitted, but the likes of Kappa Majan did not. And it meant that they gained a lot of position overall. The gap between Kappa Majan and Jacobs, by the way, 20 seconds to make up. So... If Jacobs really does have that better setup, then he's going to have to use it to full advantage if Kapamijan is not to pit. We look to Barclay now. Does he respond? No, he goes around again. Round again. His teammate, Luis Felipe, Kapamijan, he That's also round goes round again. again. That's just Chirpin. Yeah. But Bryson, this is clearly a downfall strategy, isn't it? Bryson in from fourth. Uh, we look now to Weeks, and Weeks we is in as well. well. Dahlberg goes around again. Marius Nicolay with, still with the lights problem. Um, still there in P7, he goes around again, and here comes Jacobs now. I mean, he's going to easily overtake Bryson and Weeks, that much is for sure. The guys that we're interested in uh, seeing where he's in relation to is uh, Barclay and Kapamajan, of course. Yeah. And uh, by the way, David Junk came out in P18. He came, in out, came out in a lot of free air, uh, but obviously outside the points isn't exactly what he would want. Nevertheless, let's see where Boyd Bryson comes out. He has Augustine Candapino go past. Obviously, Jordan Weiss won't be overtaking him. Boyd Bryson comes nice. back out into ninth nice position. position. And that is a lot of free air for the South African as well. well. That's nice and comfy for him. Oh, he's a bit close out to the pillar exit, but uh, hopefully didn't cross it. And what of Jordan Weeks? He's been in there for quite a while. A lot longer than Bryson, actually, to be honest, as well. Yeah, Brett Metcalf comes around as a P14 Paul Joseph comes in. So it's going to be close with Rick Scott, now inherited a 14th position, Rick. It's going to be close with Jordan. This is going to be legitimately for position as well. But Jordan Weeks comes out nicely ahead with a lot of free air ahead of him as well. Uh, so points to be on the ball, points to be had for Weeks, uh, no matter what happens at the end of this race. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's... I don't know what happened with his pit stop because he seemed to be longer than quite a few people in there, to be honest. Mm. Whether he fueled the tank. Maybe, Maybe he had to pit for tyres and the tank. tank. Could be. Could be. Uh, but I, I don't know. And uh, we, we see Barkley go around again now. Captain Majan. Yeah, he goes around also again. Around again. Oh, maybe they had a bit extra fuel. As I say, maybe they're not planning on pitting at all. Uh, could be. Dahlberg round. Marius round. round. And, and looking at this gap between Jacobs and Barclay, remember it was 20 seconds. Oh no, it was 20 seconds between Kappa Majan and Jacobs, wasn't it? Yeah. 
across the line we go now, the gap between Kafamajan and Jacobs is... 18 seconds. So it has gone down by two seconds in that lap alone. It's the fresh tyres, I think. Crucially, though, Jacobs... Well, we don't know whether he's pitted for tyres as Reese Gardner comes into the pit now from P7. But crucially, the gap to the lead did not decrease. So maybe Barclay truly is the one with the power of the race in his hands. Maybe he just has the upper hand over Kappa Majan, which would be surprising. Anyway, Reese Gardner just leaving the pits now. And we will see how disadvantaged Jordan Weeks is. Remember, Jordan was sixth coming into the pits. Reese Gardner was uh, eighth on track when before the pit stage. And out comes Gardner ahead of Weeks. Yeah, Weeks just fit across the start finish straight now. Into turn one. See, that's a good five second gap or something, isn't it? Between Gardner and Weeks. So Weeks, Weeks is really lost out. It's about, it's about six or seven seconds, but it looks like it. Mm. Might have been a very good pit stop for Gardner and a very bad pit stop for Weeks, we're not too sure. But, uh... we, 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 we both thought Weeks was in there for a long time, mm. so he, he must have had something where they had uh, repair damage on, something along their minds. There is the potential as well that, of course, he's not accustomed to this series, he might not be fully in tune with the strategies that go on as Barclay goes round again. Uh, well, 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 he's still off the points, yeah, but obviously he's lost, lost some. Kafamishan round again, Chogun round again. Yeah, yeah. Dahlberg now losing a lot of time to Nikolai, I notice. Oh, yeah, Nikolai is right up against him now. This is going to be the battle for the next one now. A couple of laps. On track as well. And I tell you, look how much time Jacobs has eaten out of the lead. That's only so that it was 23.3 seconds between Barclay and uh, Jacobs. Now 21.6 seconds. So another two seconds eaten out of the two Basilia guys. Yeah, so it's, it's like you say, it's either his wing or his tyres which are going to be helping him. I don't know whether he pitted because he used all his tyres trying to overtake the Basilia guys. Because, you know, he, he was in the dirty air for quite a long time as uh, Dahlberg just gets a bit twitchy on the exit there. Yeah, I think we'll keep an eye on this battle, won't we? Because it's probably the closest on track at the moment as the pit phase tries to sort itself out. Dahlberg obviously wanting to keep on track as long as possible was following in the slipstream excuse me in the slipstream of Jordan Weeks for pretty much the entirety of this first stint of the races we have passed halfway by the way about 25 26 minutes left on the clock now under all sorts of pressure from Marius Nicolay the walk racing driver the lone walk driver in this field once again and really has been a very disappointing campaign for walks so far especially after such a promising qualifying from Burak as well Rick Scott now in for Hawkeye uh, he becomes another pitter out of the points. Unfortunately, we should promote Davijan back into the points. Uh, as Dahlberg's able to hold on for Nicolay for the moment. Just looking up to Barkley now. Yeah, he's good for the last ship. Doesn't pit. I am wondering whether these guys are going to no stop. It goes round again. That's probably... That's why they weren't worried about him overtaking him. It's... I did say, and oh, sorry, Nicolay threw on uh, Dahlberg as well, down at turn 12 once again, both going round again as well, and here comes the next man we're interested in, Thomas Jacobs, it doesn't look to me like too much time has been gained on this lap, uh, and he crosses the line, remember, it was 21.3 across the line last time around, 20.9, so it is still a gain, but not as much as usual, or yeah, not as not much not as last time, I should say. Well, it wasn't a massive gain, but... Every tenth helps, I suppose. You know, anything happens in motorsport nowadays. And oh, Jordan Weeks, Weeks is out! What happened to Jordan Weeks? Let's have That's a look there. Quick look back at that. I think he might have had a lag out moment or something. Because the, the, the replay lags out massively. And then he goes off track. I think he just lagged out and he might have hit a wall or something because suspension damage would mean that he has sustained damage. But what a shame for Jordan on debut as well. He was in such a good point and after the terrible pit stop, it's all gone wrong and he becomes our eighth retirement of the day. It looked like he'd turned through turn eight. He got onto the curb in a bit too much. Um, looking at the replay now, he goes into the second half, gets 
Yeah, he gets kind of bumped and then goes out wide. And as he returns onto the track, he just loses it, fishtails out, and then careers into the barrier and spins uh, round and round. That's a real shame for Jordan. We're showing good. I hope he does return sometime. He was looking very good today. As we now look to Nico Barclay once again. I remember Barclay was actually quite a late pitter last time. Oh, yeah, sorry, not last time, time, but in Fuji. Be... Goes round again. Yeah, Kevin Bajal, are we looking at him? Uh, he goes round again as well. Kirkwin in an Aston Martin, remember, saying car is down force, guys. Okay, going round again. Here comes Nicolay and Dahlberg. Remember, Dahlberg still staying underneath the rear wing of another car, helping him to some degree, but look who is behind him now. Jacobs has closed again. He's got to overtake other cars on track now. Their strategy could be impacting his. He crosses the line. The gap to the lead now, 19.5. That's another 1.4 seconds taken out of the lead. Needs to uh, get a wriggle on and pass the Finn and the German ahead of him now in order to get anything out of this race in terms of a podium, I'd imagine. Yeah, it took him, what, 20 minutes to get into, into first position from the start, but obviously that was incidents as well. Yeah, so yeah. He, he, it's a possibility he could do it, and especially if they're the two in front of him are going to pit as well, then he's got all the opportunity he needs. Like he's there at the right place at the right time. 23 minutes remaining. We're almost at a 20 minute mark. So, really, not too long to go now. The leader's on lap 20 of a predicted 32. Nico Barclay leads from Kappa Mijan by 6.6 .6 seconds. Then Chirgwin's a further four behind. Nicolay and Dahlberg, and then further down the road, seven seconds further down the road. Behind them is Thomas Jacobs, the only man out of the top seven to pit. The next man who has pitted down the road is Boyd Bryce and his teammate in eighth. Uh, so far, it's been quite a, it's been a race of lots of retirements, eight out so far, as well. If you're just joining us, uh, after such a clean start to the series, it's uh, got a bit downhill, unfortunately, after a crash on the, on the uh, start line. But there's been good racing as well, and an intriguing strategy left to play out. Barclay goes round again, as does Kappa Majan. We look now to Matthew Chergwin in P3, who also goes round again. And now to the two battling of Nicolay and Dahlberg. And here comes Jacobs. He'll want one of these guys to pit. Neither do. do. So he's going to have to make the overtake on track. Oh, yeah. He's, he's closed the gap again. It's It's got to be something he's, he's set up. It's got to be so planted for him to be able to get and do what he's doing. And yeah, he's, he's, he's game time's on the leader, but... That time gained is going to be lost now if uh, Dahlberg and Nicolay head start to defend for their positions. Well, exactly. It's all for position. It's not like he's going to get the blue flag help, right? Mm. We'll keep up with them now as we head through turn three. He's going to start suffering from understeer as well. Perhaps his setup is pretty good in those understeer conditions as well. We certainly saw it when he was overtaking two Scuderia Basilia guys. Dahlberg looking the most susceptible, though, as he has been throughout this race. He's been doing a good, decent job for his first race here at World GT uh, but he's got to be careful now Jacobs is an experienced veteran you could call him in the world of World GT as uh, Nicolay ahead locks up quite a bit uh, I'd imagine if Jacobs is going to overtake anywhere it'll probably be at his favourite spot of turn 12 yeah right right under brake and you know he's, he'll just use that soft brake pedal just to bring the car to the perfect apex He's right on the back of Dahlberg, isn't he? All oh, going right out to the edge of track limits. And will he have a look into turn nine? No, he's got to hold up a little bit, doesn't he? This is the problem that he was going to encounter. 18.2, the gap to the leaders going across the sector one split. We'll see whether he can gain a little bit back from the slipstream of Dahlberg now. Crossing the sector two splits. He's actually gained more time on the leaders and almost pushing Dahlberg round. Dahlberg oh, entitled might... to go to the outside of the track there. Jacobs being held up here, though, despite gaining time, amazingly. Jacobs around the outside. Dahlberg entitled to hold his position and hold his position. He has, by the way, Barclay, Kapamajan, Chogrin all going round again as well. Jacobs has to hold his head a little bit here, though he doesn't want to get too impatient. Have they made the right move? That is the question. He's lost, lost time, time for the first time. Is it going to pay off? It's traffic. Traffic is going to be his problem is to be his error if anything that's going to play the part in this uh, it's been pretty evident now that Dahlberg is not going to give up his position easily at all 
Here comes Jacobs once again. again. Down, down the inside of turn three. Not able to do anything just for the moment. Uh, but you can see he's getting a little bit impatient, taking a wiser line into turn four here. Was hoping to get the cutback. Darbo covers him off beautifully, actually, as we head into uh, turn five through turn six. And now up to turn seven. Maybe Jacobs will try a late stab here, like Canapino did uh, earlier in the race. And I believe it was Roy Schroten. No, nothing doing there. And uh, Jacobs losing further time. Lost a further three tenths through sector one. This is beginning to hurt him now. Yeah, he's got a, a through turn eight now. He's just got to hold his line and just hope into turn nine he'll be able to get him. He's close. He's close to him. Probably the closest he's been. Looking at it. Yeah. He's going to turn nine. He's going for it. Oh, here we go. Yep, down into turn nine he goes. And got it stopped beautifully as well for the corner. Great stuff from Jacobs. He's got to be careful for the return overtake from Dahlberg into turn 12, though. Yeah, rolls are reversed now. Dahlberg's got the... Uh, the slipstream and it's he's going to be defending you know he's thinking about attack but he's going to have to be defending against it nothing doing actually though even in the slipstream Ooh, jacobs is still good Dahlberg was pretty good then i think that's how he's been able to stay in the uh under the rear wings of other cars though the two basilia goes on again basilia is Vasilius. Vasilius, got to got to get that right. right. Did, did I say, say it wrong? I do apologise if I say it wrong. <laughs> every, th every time I say it, I think about what I gotta say first. Bad <laughs> habits. Are you hard? It's like a little virus spreading throughout the league with mispronunciations. Like Lee Bear yeah, as well. Wow. Nobody else apart from me says Kenny Lee Bear. But anyway, enough about Kenny. It's all about Jacobs for the moment. He actually gained another tenth on the leaders now. But the problem yeah, is. He's Nikolai. got another, another car, car to get through, though. He's got to get past Marius now. Yeah, but Nikolai has pulled out a gap. He just doesn't seem to have closed him as quickly as he did uh, Dahlberg. Well, I think the reason was because Dahlberg was holding him up so much and had to defend off Jacobs. I mean, you look how much Jacobs is losing Dahlberg now. He is really starting to struggle with Finn. Yeah, that's true. And I'll tell you what, I mean, to be fair, though, he's got a really nice gap back to Canapino, doesn't he? 20 seconds or so. Considering we only have about 15 minutes left of this race to go as well, that should be a nice, comfortable gap. As around turn 8 we go now, I do notice Chergwin is really not too far up the road either from uh, Nicolay. It's actually, the reason why I was like, oh god, he's actually much closer than he is. It's actually Philip Morby, the TSA, next up the road for Nicolay. He'll be uh, getting the blue flags sooner or later, Morby, Morby who was involved in that in first accident at the start of the But look how much Jacobs has closed up in one sector alone. This is extraordinary pace from the Englishman. 17.5 to leaders. He's, he's got his wiggle on now, hasn't he? But uh, you're saying that, you know, Chirgwin's not too far ahead of him. He's probably what's coming out towards the last turn now. I, I, can yeah, Jacobs change for the win, win though? Man. Especially if Barclay and Kapamajan aren't pitting. That's going to be crucial. It all depends on their tyre wear now, doesn't it? You know, they weren't pushing. Or fuel. Or fuel. fuel, that's true. They, it doesn't seem like they were pushing, and they don't seem to be pushing it as much as Jacobs is, because he's closing that gap down. So whether they can hold on to their tyres, whether they're fueled, there's enough fuel for them. Well, we shall look now to see what Jacobs can do. He gained a little bit of time on the leaders, but wasn't really a big chunk. And considering that we do have 15 minutes left, it means that Jacobs is pretty much going to have to gobble up a second per minute at this stage, which is well, it's about half a lap. So two seconds per lap on the leaders in order to catch up to them. Yeah, yeah. It is it's, it's maths. He's close. he's close to Marius again, like. And he's 6.2 away from the leaders as well. So he is still closing. But he's got to dispatch from Nicolay a little bit more swiftly than he did. Dahlberg. And it looks already... Look at him. He's already... Eyeing up in the moon on the inside, and I tell you what, Nicolay just made it ten times easier. Or has he? He's kept position. Uh, a lucky, a, a lucky reprieve for Nicolay, but he's going to be a little bit slow down here. And I imagine that uh, the Aston Martin should gobble up the position by the end of the straight. We go across the second sector bit now, 
And again, more time gained. Turn 12 again, isn't he? He's he is going to be turn 12. 12. Let's have a look. Uh, I think, oh, I was going to say, he's too far back, but... He is! His speed is huge, like. Maybe he can't do anything. Nikola able to hold on for now. So a decent job from the German to uh, hold off the Englishman. And yeah, being held... Oh, you can see Jacob's trying to get the better line through the final turn here, which he has done. And he needs to stay in the slipstream. He might go for a late diving turn. I mean, look at that. The, f the wing of uh, Nikolai is really good. Will Jacob's go for a... No, he won't. He's going to consider his move for another time. So uh, Nikolai proving as much a pain in the uh, rear end of Jacob's as, it, uh, as Dahlberg before him. Uh, 13 minutes to go, he's, uh, he's got to do something. I don't think he's going to get the win. If he's going to get anything, it will be podium, but it'll be third max, I reckon. As we have a late pitter, Augustin Canapino in for Adonis Engineering, and he's missed his pit box as well, as if it didn't go from bad to worse. So Boy Bryson goes through into seventh. I'm just keeping an eye on Jacobs Nicolay as well. They're still going side by side. McGlade up into eighth. I shall keep an eye on where a Canapino comes out. He pitted in P7, I remind you. Schroten through into ninth. Schroten without a front bumper, I remind you. In ninth position, a great effort from the Dutchman so far. Gardner up into 10th. He's missing a rear bumper. Canapino still in the pits. And here comes Brett Metcalf, of all the people. Amaroli Racing Team haven't exactly had the best of times in this championship either. Um, no points scored here. As uh, we... Uh, unfortunately, I have to say goodbye to Mike Phyllis, who uh, leaves us to uh, pick up his uh, wife from a local city. So uh, we wish you the best of luck, Mike. Uh, have a lovely evening. And we welcome Thomas Hins onto uh, the cameras. And for, well, I think you can just about see the action, but it's not live, unfortunately. It's through RRD. So uh, I'll be going solo on from here on out. But Augustin Canapino comes out in P12 there. So... Not the biggest of losses, but a loss nonetheless. And so well, if Brett Metcalf is able to hold on to that P11, it'll be massive. As I see Jacobs and uh, Marius Nicolay going into combat, and Jacobs has got him. I'll have a look at the move then. Jacobs tried to go down the inside of turn 12, couldn't do anything. Went around the outside of P uh, T13 and got him through T14. Nicolay going to have a little look on the... Uh, outside of turn one nothing doing though and that is a crucial move for thomas jacobs he's lost further time behind the german to the leaders but it was a move that needs to be done next on his list is matthew chergwin five seconds up the road so uh could be a very exciting finale i think as uh, mike was alluding to before he left it will probably take the front two to pit if they are to pit at all for Jacobs to be in with a chance to win this race is the same for any of them to be very very honest and uh, looking I think it is possible for Jacobs to take that P3 as Chogun is only four seconds off the road as uh, Nicolay and Dahlberg will likely go into battle once again now that Jacobs has scythed his way through them to go through the other point scorers so far to remind you Bryson in seventh McGlade after getting involved in the start the start finish late uh, start finish line accident he's there in P8 Schroten without front bumper P9 Gardner 10th Metcalf oh what a shame Metcalf from P11 comes into the uh, pits for Amaroli racing team Canapino into the pits as well for Alan Rody Racing Team. And I wonder whether that is a drive-through penalty. Oh, Brett Metcalf has missed his pit box as well. And no, I wonder whether Gustin's in for a stop-go. Bizarre scenes as Luke Walsh is going to capitalise on that through into P11. Um, no, this is bizarre. I don't know. So Metcalf, away he goes. And away Gustin Canapino goes as well. But here comes David Junt now. P14 for PB racing he's actually been lapped David Junt uh, as Barclay goes through and David Junt will take P12 thank you very much the racing aces PB driver up into uh, four points for his team Brett Metcalf in P13 Augustin Canapino P14 and then Rick Scott who's not too far behind these guys actually now P15 and scoring a point on his return to sim racing I'm sure Rick will be ecstatic with that and for his own outfit as well he's got to get out of the way though of Luis Felipe Capamajan who is coming through to lap the Englishman now. Just looking where Paul, jo oh, Paul Joseph is miles back for the mighty fourth. So Rick Scott, I think, unless he makes a mistake, pretty safe in that 15th position for now. Uh, as Nicolay and Dahlberg are still pretty close to each other. Pretty close, but not close enough to make a move. 
Jacobs ever closing on Chergwin though. The gap is now 1.8. No. I am wrong. It is 2. Point... Wow, my maths is awful today. It's something around 2 seconds. We'll go with that. After such good maths early as well, I'm disappointing myself. Less than 10 minutes to go though. 9 now. And a reminder of the procedure at the end of this race. Once the timer hits zero, then the lead driver comes to the end of his lap. And that is at as Dahlberg is past Nicolay into turn nine. And Nicolay's tyres, I fear, have gone. Dahlberg, who's looked a bit all over the place, to be honest, through into P5. And he's been he's had a very conservative race so far. Doing very well, though. Nicolay straight back up the inside. And, oh, Dahlberg going slightly wide at turn 11 there as well. There's a... Um, News going on below these guys outside the top 10. But uh, a good cutback there from Nicolay, albeit a very late one. And uh, the German back up into P5 for the moment being. Augustin Canapino again into the pits. He's got a problem with that car. And after what has been a fantastic drive from the Argentine so far, he is now likely to finish outside the points. Is this a pure drive through? Oh, it is. It is just a drive-through for Canapino. I noticed Luke Walsh has also been into the pits. So Canapino will come back out in P15. But disaster for the Argentine after such a great race as well. So Davignon up into 11th. Brett Metcalf up into 12th. He's now going to be letting through uh, Kapamajan as well. Rick Scott up into P13. Luke Walsh after pitting into P14. Canapino rounding out the points in P15 as Cho... <laughs> Chuggy Jergwin is under a lot of pressure now for the final podium place. Thomas Jacobs has caught up at a rate of knots. He's got seven and a half minutes to make a move on the Englishman. It looks to me for all the world like the Scuderia Basilia guys are indeed going to be no stopping. So another masterclass from the Peruvian duo. As Jacobs around the outside of Jergwin at turn eight. Couldn't make it done, but it looks like there is certainly one Aston Martin stronger than the other. And to give you a clue at home, is not the one. In blue and black colours as Jacobs goes off track. Chergwin squirming out of turn eight. The two able to hold position behind Nicolay and Dahlberg going side by side as well. Nicolay able to hold ahead just for now. But all of a sudden at the end of this race, we've got a right spicy meatball coming up for you. Good sirs and madams out there. Jacobs right on the back of Chergwin. These two still closing on the leaders, but it is not going to be enough. Does Jacobs have the straight line speed? In the slipstream, though, Chergwin seems to have a pretty good straight line speed himself. Jacob's going to try around the outside of turn 12. We've talked about his braking all day. Chergwin gives him the room, and Jacobs is past easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Onto the podium he goes. Next up, the road is Luis Felipe Capamajan. Can he make up eight seconds? We'll see what it is when we actually cross the line. It is, oh, it's a bit more than that, isn't it? It's about eight seconds or so, 8.5. It's got to be done in six minutes, though. We shall see how much fuel saving and tyre saving Luis Felipe Capamajan really has to do before the end of this race behind Nicolay, able to hold on to Dahlberg for the time being. Bryson well behind in seventh. There's a real split between sixth and seventh now. McGlaze to late. Schroten ninth. Gardner tenth. Yanta eleventh. Metcalf twelfth. Rick Scott thirteenth. Still ahead of Luke Walsh in fourteenth. And the Canapino still holds. Oh, Canapino pulling off to the side here. This might be it. He's on the outside. And oh, what a shame for Canapino. Out he goes with unspecified issues. He becomes our ninth retirement of the day, unfortunately. What a shame for the Argentine. But it's good news for Paul Joseph. He will continue the uh, point streak that the Mighty Fourth has going. No matter how small they are, they are still points for the Scottish outfit. And the Scotsman will be doing good for score for his own team. We have hit the five minutes to go mark now as Brett Metcalf has been overtaken by Rick Scott. And what happened to Brett there? He was comfortably ahead of Rick. Oh, he's just had to go very slow for some reason. And so I wonder what's happening to Brett Metcalf. Is he run out of fuel or something? Either way, Rick Scott up into 12th for Hawkeye. It's going to be their best finish of the year so far going to be their only point score finish of the year so far and here comes Luke Walsh now they got to be careful though because Thomas Shakers behind is going to be lapping them the blue flag will be flown 
Uh, Luke Walsh obviously wants to get past, and of course, in these difficult situations, you can use the cars behind, or the cars, yeah, the cars coming through due to the blue flag rules to uh, take advantage yourself, of course. Crossing the line now, lap 30, of a predicted 32, 4 minutes 15 left, Barclay leads by 8.1 seconds to Luis Felipe Capamajan, barring any late crises for Barclay, he is going to step out of the shadow of his teammate for the second time this year after securing pole position for this race and will take his first race win of his own uh, season. I don't know where I'm going with that, but either way, still a very, very good day for Scuderia Basile. will be their first 1-2 of the year in the race. They took a 1-3 in uh, Fuji. And they... Oh, no, they didn't take a 1-3 in Fuji. What did they? I'll have a little look for you. I've got time. They did take a 1-3 in Fuji, but they took a 1-18 in Interlagos due to Barclay's disconnection. We certainly hope the same thing won't happen here as Jacobs is now trying to side his way through the traffic. He's gotten past Walsh, he's gotten past Metcalf, but Metcalf has led off too much and Luke Walsh is through there for P13. Great advantage taken due to the lap traffic and Metcalf now actually looking at Paul Joseph. How far behind is he? Oh, he's miles behind. I think Metcalf should be fine actually, to be honest. For that P14 as long as he doesn't run out of fuel or anything. Only 17 runners and riders left though. So we're hoping that these guys do get to the end. As I'm looking now at this gap between Jacobs and uh, Kafamajan. We'll have a look at what happens when they uh, cross the start finish straight as ahead. Rick Scott is now going to have to give way to the Englishman. Into the turn 12 hairpin we go. Jacobs closes up, closes up. I notice Brent Metcalf has actually closed up a lot on Luke Walsh as well. And Rick's got smart. He knows where he can let through Jacobs. So let's see. Good man. Moving over to the side. Kapamajan, 8.9 seconds behind the lead. Jacobs, 14 seconds behind the lead. So he did gain time on that lap. But it's 5 seconds to gain in 2 minutes 20. I really don't think he's going to be able to do it unless he can have a monumental last couple of laps. Nikolay and Dahlberg still battling for P5 and P6, by the way. Oh, excuse me. Been an excellent battle between those two all race. Well, for half the race, pretty much. There's the other Amaroli. There's another Amaroli still in the race. Ken Hunter. He hasn't actually outlapped Canapino. Now he has. He's just gone past where Canapino was. And this is a difficult situation, actually. Look at this. Um, Metcalf trying to get out of the way of Dahlberg and Nikolay. And yeah, getting in their way a little bit too much there, unfortunately. But they are still going round one and a half minutes to go until race end is called. So we're probably going to get the end of this lap. In fact, no, we are. We're definitely going to get the end of this lap for Barclay. And then it'll be one more lap to go unless I've messed things up horribly once again as Luke Walsh gets past Rick Scott. Rick Scott onto the AstroTurf. What happened there? We shall have a look. Uh, oh, Rick Scott just went wide of his own account. Was really good, lucky to save it, actually, on the outside. So Luke Walsh through to P12. Rick Scott back down to P13. Brett Metcalf a little bit further behind us. Dahlberg having a little look on Nicolay once again. But P5 can't do anything. Uh, but up at the front, once I'm just looking at... Oh, this gap between Felipe, Capamajan, and Jacobs. 4.5 seconds at the Sector 2 split. If it was two more laps... I would say Jacobs has a chance to get second as he's trying to get past David Junt now. David really not getting out of the way. I don't know what he is doing, to be honest, at this stage. Slowing up now, thankfully. What is it when you cross the line, though? 3.5, yeah, really didn't make Jacobs' life a little bit easier there. Should be on the final lap of this race, we believe. As Rick's got pits! Oh, Rick! No! Oh, Rick! As that is time. That is time. The end of this lap is going to be it, I think. And so actually, I'm not sure what's going to happen with Rick. I think Rick might have secured P14, to be honest. Well, look at Joseph now. If Joseph crosses the line and has a time next to his name, or do they go until the end, actually, I wonder? Oh, they are going to go round again, so... Yeah, unfortunately, Rick Scott going to be 15th there. Should remain 15th, though. Should at least score a point. But yeah, I think that is now time, unless we do have one more lap, as I say. So apologies if I do go all excited. And uh, it turns out that I don't need to be. I mean, oh. 
one more lap and Jacobs would be on Kappa Majan for sure. Because it is now pretty much 3.5 seconds. Jacobs is right there. He is right there. And looking at... Oh! Oh! Contact between Dahlberg and Nikolay! Oh, and Nikolay's lost his rear bumper. Dahlberg going through. I'm not sure what's going on there. But Dahlberg, who I'm, I hear isn't the... Uh, he's a clean driver, but yeah. Nikolay losing his rear bumper anyway. Either way, we look to the leader now. Nico Barclay rounding the final few corners. And I shall... We will confirm a theory here. Does he get a time? He's going to cross the line now. He's got his headlights on. He knows he's won this race. Nico Barclay wins his first of the year. He stops the stampede of Kapamajan, who still manages to finish P2. Just ahead of Thomas Jacobs, who had a pit stop in hand. So it's a Scuderia Basilio 1-2. Jacobs third. A long, long, long way behind. Well, not too long, actually. It's seven seconds or so. It's Matthew Chergwin, another strong finish in P4. Tero Dahlberg finishes P5 for Fox Racing, but... That'll be a little bit debatable. There's a little bit of contact with Marius Nicolet there on the final lap through turn eight. Nicolet finishes P6. Boyd Bryson will finish P7 in a strong day for downforce, but ultimately not strong enough. Scuderia Basilio will be further extending their gap out at the top of the team standings. Lewis McGlade will come home a very distant, uh, but still strong considering the uh, conditions that he's been under. P8. Roy Schroten without a front bumper for pretty much the majority of this race. Will finish P9, an excellent excellent effort there from the Dutchman. Rhys Gardner will make it a double top 10 for Aurora there in 10th. With David Junt, P11. From pit lane, I remind you, Luke Walsh, P12. Brett Metcalf, P13. Paul Joseph, P14. And Rick Scott, though he's retired officially from the race on lap 31 and 32, will score that final point. Your retirements from today. There were quite a few of them. It was Augustin Canapino, Jordan Weeks, Paul Watkins, Diego Carantha, Theo van den Brink, Mark Fuller, Burek Soilu, Alexander van der Wilder, and Pedro Gomez. Uh, you can count Rick Scott in there since he didn't finish the race and decided to quit. But, well, that was a very, very interesting race. A very different race from what we've seen uh, earlier seasons. But I'm sure Nico Barclay won't care one jot how different it was. He'll just be glad that the difference that concerns him is that he won this race ahead of Luis Felipe Capamajan. Nevertheless, Luis, he only lost points to Barclay uh, today. And given that Barclay is miles behind in the teams in the uh, Drivers' Championship, sorry, I don't think he shall be too worried one bit. Just going to leave the track now. It's a, it's a good thing about World GT. You always look forward to a race at the end of an hour or at the end of a month sorry it's not sort of oversaturated necessarily as we've had no tweets in we've had no hashtags in which means that we can move straight on to podium interviews as they uh, come into the room uh, uh, yeah, nobody in just yet so I shall uh, take this time to inform you a lot about what is happening in the next two weeks here at the league so Make sure to join us next week as we head back to the Silverstone International Circuit for the career ladder. We have Open Series and Formula Challenge on the Tuesday. We have Super Cup on the Wednesday and then we have the British Grand Prix, the Super League on the Thursday, which my current cameraman now, Thomas Hins, is going to be uh, co-commentating on, I believe. Uh, and then, in yep, hello there, Thomas. Well, he does have a voice. He just couldn't <laughs> hey. see the action or anything. <laughs> yeah, um, yes, and hello, guys. Yes, we do a switch of the cameras. Hopefully, you guys didn't even notice because we did a nice little mm. transition there. Mm. Tricky. No, it's, it's so. tricky. Tricky stuff. This is actually a first off after two broadcast as well. Yeah, it is. That's the first time I've been in an RF2 one, and yeah, it was to see. Um, I didn't obviously didn't see the whole race, but um, from what I saw there, it was quite interesting. Good results for... I know Jacobs actually, no, sorry, I was talking to Jacobs before uh, I came in to do this, and he did say he wanted to get a third or not get fourth, basically. So, well, he's <laughs> broken the trend, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he has. Uh, but yes, anyway, um, two weeks from now as well, we have... A return to the independent series, though, without World GT, as I say, we are like uh, when like Nutella, best served in good amounts, but not every day, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, we got on the Monday the International Touring Cup with uh, Simon Smith, We're going to be heading to New Zealand Manfield Auto Course. Should be an exciting short race, uh, short three races, I should say that one. Then we have a very exciting event. We have the return of the GPVWC Indy Classic. Uh, now at half length to last year, since last year we spent about four hours watching that one. That was a bit of a 
that was one that dragged on a little bit so shorter and uh, as i say hopefully you might see a little cameo from me in the safety car well, actually no we hope there isn't a safety car because we'd like to see clean racing but it's an indie classic yeah. so it's likely not going to happen that sort of way and then of course on the wednesday two weeks time we have the austrian sports series where hopefully we'll be using a proper build of the red bull ring and not the a1 ring which we've been using for the past uh, few years here at the league so no podium interviews here today unfortunately yeah. but we do have people who want to be interviewed and so <laughs> we shall interview them so first of all Let's start off. Let's start off with the new boy, shall we? Um, and someone who got involved with a little bit of contact near the end as well. Tero Dahlberger, welcome to GPVWC. A very, very good uh, first race for you. A high result of uh, fifth, I think it was at the end. But perhaps you could uh, help us understand a bit what, better what happened through turn eight between yourself and Nikolay, because you had a great battle up until then, and then all of a sudden the bumper flew off the back of his car. Uh, yeah. Uh, hi. Thanks. Um... Yeah, he, I think his uh, front tire, left front, uh, sorry, right front was probably really, really um, bad, <laughs> you know, in bad condition. And he was really, really slow through there. And he was kind of protecting his inside line. And I kind, I tried to dive on the inside there and surprise him, which isn't really a good overtaking move. <laughs> but it was the last lap and uh, I was kind of out of uh, out of options as I uh, couldn't c keep up with him on the straights and yeah I, I it happened so fast I kind of feel like maybe he turned in a bit late but I, I don't know maybe he got loose or uh, I don't know I need to check the replay it always does happen so far sometimes you just can't avoid it either way I'm sure that you know whatever will happen or doesn't need to happen will or indeed won't happen but either way how are you finding it here at the league as I say you're one of the new guys here you've come in due to the new explosion of R Factor 2 uh, interest here of course uh, is World GT living up to your expectations are you having a good time yeah yeah uh, it's a really tough uh, tough race at least for the car uh, uh tough for the tires and uh, struggling with maybe a little bit of performance and of course the fuel mileage is, is an issue and I don't know if it's the gearing and the RPM limit we set for the car that made it so slow out of the corners and that really was really a problem for me but uh, I think it, it was a good result considering I did a really bad noobish mistake in the qualifying and I didn't refuel enough to go back into the pit so I only got a good uh, uh, one lap in that wasn't even a very fast one, just a safe, safe lap. Well, I'm sure that you'll bounce back nevertheless, so cheers for joining us, uh, Tero, as we move on to our P4 man, Matthew Chergwin, held on to P3 for so long that it just wasn't to be Jacobs with a, a very uncanny and very witty uh, one-stop strategy there, which ultimately many had better tyres and less fuel. Yeah, absolutely, and hats off, got it absolutely right. I did wonder uh, just before the race, should we switch things up? But uh, but no, it wasn't to be. Um, but you want to know something? To, um, Turkey, Istanbul, it's not an easy track to drive. I made the choice early that we should try the North Stop again since it seems to be a quick way of getting round uh, or getting home uh, in the hour's time. And uh, and yeah, it was hard work, but I'm really happy with the top five again. All valuable points and, uh, and yeah, a good race. Just a shame. Couldn't quite hold on at the end there. Now, this is quite a big difference in season for you considering your 2013 season back then you were in and around the points but not really troubling the top 10 too much here if my quick maths is correct you should actually be in the top three heading out of this round so how does that mount up on you is there a lot of pressure on your shoulders now to continue this good form or are you very much taking it all relaxed back you know saying you know whatever happens happens i'll just do my best and see where i am at the end of the year uh, I'm just taking it race by race. I mean, so the big difference, without question, is that this is R Factor 2. Um, World GT, last World GT was, of course, an R Factor 1. And uh, put simply, if you didn't get the right setup and get, you know, the, the magic 10 degrees across all your tyres, um, you just wouldn't have as much grip as people who did. So, um, so pace was an issue then. And, well, as you say, I was in or around the low end of the points here. Driving technique, tyre management, fuel management, it all comes into, into play. And... Uh, it's something which evidently I seem to have a fairly good knack at. So to be honest, I'll just take it round by round, race by race, see where we are with the car. The cars are quite a unique beast. It has its strengths, it has its weaknesses. Uh, and we'll just try and uh, you know do our best each round, round by round and we'll see where we are in the end. 
Fantastic. Well, well done on your results anyway, Matt, and uh, cheers Thank for you. joining us. And now we're going to get a little insight on the uh, the start-finish line accident with Mr. Lewis McGlade. So firstly, congratulations on a wonderful recovery drive. I think it was P8 in the end, uh, but what on earth happened there at the start? I looked away and all of a sudden cars were around. Yeah, I've, I've already like looked back on the incident. I won't name names, but you know, there was, there was one driver who decided that there wasn't three cars on the inside and just sort of just went straight across the track and caused a, a wreck that ruined uh, not many people races you know like it obviously you know ruined mine i got hit by i, I would have avoided it but um roy behind tried avoiding the crash obviously flew across the track and smashed into me it wasn't his fault he was just trying to get out of the way of the crash so you know then then started the recovery i think i got down to about 23rd um and it was I, I didn't really want to overtake people because I didn't want to use the tyres too much. I had, like, big front bumper damage. I didn't want to go and overtake people too much because it just would have destroyed the front. So it was a, a really tough drive. Um, it, it, to be honest, realistically, looking at my pace, uh, I wouldn't have been able to battle with the top six. I think seventh would have been the best I could have done had that first lap crash not happened. But, um, yeah, no, it's just uh, it's just annoying to have it ruined that early. Yeah, I can understand it, but... Yeah, unfortunately, these things do happen in sim racing. And as I, I said regarding, you know, Terry's incident as well, if anything needs to happen, it will happen thanks to the wonderful disciplinary committee that we have. So cheers uh, for joining us, Lewis. And we will wrap up with your teammate, Mr. Reese Gardner, in getting into a good habit with these top 10s now. Reese, um, I'm not, I think you were slightly included in the incident. I saw you m were missing your rear bumper by the end of the race as well. Uh, but yet another good finish for Aurora Motorsports overall. Yeah, it was. Uh, I was very happy with the result, all things considered. Um, <clears throat> uh, to be completely honest, it wasn't a particularly enjoyable race to run because uh, uh, me and Lewis were both having car problems and um, in qualifying, the it seemed like someone just decided to put caster wheels on the rear tyres and there was absolutely no rear grip. Um, but uh, I managed to um, I managed to take advantage of the, the start line incident and uh, Tried to get past a few more people, but um, unfortunately, uh, I just I just wasn't able to, and just kept making small mistakes and fell back a bit further, and uh, that that was that was how I lost my rear bumper. Actually, I think it was um, Canapino. Uh, I was I was sandwiched between him and another Ferrari, and uh, yeah, the the Ferrari in front of me slowed down, and uh, he obviously had nowhere to go, and uh, I looked in the rearview mirror, and there was my bumper flying away saying goodbye to you. I'm, I'm presuming that you won't want those sorts of worries next race at Portimao, but given the characteristics of the circuit Algarve, if you were struggling here, I imagine that you're not holding out too much hope for any sort of improvement next race. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm taking each race as it comes, uh, just trying to make the best of each race at, as I race them. That's, uh, that's pretty much it. It's good to hear that you're confident and just taking it as it comes. It's sometimes the best way to do it, honestly. So cheers for joining us, everyone. Well done on all your results. And uh, from one Aussie to another, Thomas would just like to give us a little preview of what to look forward to next week. Yeah, indeed. No, as I mentioned, seeing as I'm here. Um, so, of course, we have former challenges, as you said, is the first one up, which I hope, oh, I'm assuming I'll be doing race directoring for again. So I'm sure Chris will love me and my grammar again and i'll make sure i like, <laughs> start for life even more even though he's already scarred for life because i've already made a hash brand of the whole thing <laughs> with the grammar before but no that's obviously uh first up that'll be inter interesting to see if uh, ice cold can continue to dominate there and of course we've got super cup which is the next one with of course rude and um risto seeing if they can continue to dominate wall walk racing as they have done so far this season but of course the one i'll be doing cocoms for again the dream team as we like to call ourselves of myself simon and quinton on the cameras of super league It'll be a very interesting round, I must say. Um, obviously, Philip Pushkoff, it's interesting to see if he can continue to do his thing of being up at the top of the championship again, as he has been doing so far this season. But I don't know, it'll be interesting to see with him and with the others, of course. Um, at CSG with Lewis Redshaw, can he continue to have that form he had at Montreal? I personally think I'll be keeping an eye on him. Uh, he's been strong before so far this season, showing some really good pace. And, of course, as well, David Fardick, Mr. Consistency. Uh, we're looking for him to possibly get another top three and continue to really stamp his authority on a, as a championship contender. Um, and, yeah, no, also just as well as the lower teams, as I've said before, on the Super League broadcast with uh, Woods and, and Green Stripes, their car's starting to really sort of come to fruition now as their development's starting to kick in. 
and even Kurnov as well getting some good results with Bart DeVos and Co. and, and Wixie getting some good results there as their car continues to improve. But I do, definitely will think the one to look out for after his strong result last round at Canada will be Lewis Retro in that CSG. So look forward to you guys joining Nanks. It should be a really awesome race and I'm very keen for it. Absolutely. I think we all are. And I think Mr. Lewis McGlade might have a little claim on the what constitutes as a dream team as well. There's lots of dream teams here okay. at GPVWC, to be honest, oh, yeah. which is what makes it such a wonderful league. And I'd like to thank my wonderful cameramen for this evening, for Thomas Hins, for providing such a great insight into the next week of racing and for you know, hopping in uh, late notice, as was Mike Phyllis hopping in at late notice as well, having to uh, pick up his wife from Adventures Galore. Uh, thank you both been a pleasure having you alongside me. My name's been James Kirk, and from all of us here, it's a very warm goodbye.